Here in Madrid, the atmosphere is a bit different to Barcelona. Whereas the Catalonian population is excited, bubbly, because of the possibilities of what lies ahead, here in Madrid, preparations for the elections in December are advanced, but not creating as much excitement as we thought possible. So what is the view of Madrid? I'm going to talk to my old friend and colleague from the 70s, Professor Jaime Pasto, to discuss what the mood here is and what the likely result is going to be. After the 2008 crash, and even to an extent before it, we really had a convergence of the centre-right, the PP, PSOE, in terms of social and economic policies. And so they became unrecognisable, really. Each did the same thing when they came to power. They had different sets of clients, so the clientelism was different. One party rewarded its own supporters corruptly, and Felipe's party did exactly the same thing. And we now have a situation where creating an alternative to this extreme center provoked after the crash of 2008 a huge mass movement in Spain, the Indignados, which occupied the squares and which was strong in Barcelona and strong in Madrid. And from this movement emerged Podemos. Could you describe for me the transition from a big mass movement all over the country to a party or a party movement or whatever you want to call it like Podemos? No, it was very new for us. No? The Indignados movement was an earthquake you know, in, in Spain because there was a new political generation, there was a new repolitization of the society generally. You know? And uh, the problem is that they were confronted against the uh, pop, the People's Party, you know, the, uh, his uh, absolute majority in many autonomous communities in, uh, in the state. You know. And after the best uh, phase you know, of this uh, movement, many activists of this movement uh, thought that it was uh, necessary to create a political electoral uh, party. Uh, then there were many, many initiatives no, uh, for trying to, to build a new party, uh, but finally this, it was Podemos. No? Podemos, we cannot say that it, it is a representation of the uh, Indignados movement, but uh, in Podemos there are many activists coming from the Indignados movement. Uh, then this, uh, for us, it was very important, it, not only because we uh, tried to create an alternative to the United Left, but also because there was a new political discourse, a new political way of making politics, you know. Then, after, uh, with, uh, po with Pablo Iglesias, of course, we saw the, the chance to uh, have a mediatic uh, presence, uh, presence you know? and for us it was very important. You know? there, there, were, there were Ada Colau, there was... Uh, uh, Alberto Garzón, at this moment, he's, he, he, he was becoming well known, no? but, but uh, Pablo Iglesias uh, became uh, rapidly uh, known by millions of, of people. No? Then, uh, for us, it was a combination of the mediatic presence of Pablo Iglesias, but also this uh, disposition of many activists to to make to build 
this new political organization. No? Then uh, the European attention was uh, were a surprise for everybody. No? How, what was the percentage uh, in the European elections? Eight percent only, but uh, five uh, uh, members of, of the, the new European Parliament. Par European Parliament. Uh, uh, you know that uh, Podemos appeared the, uh, in January. No, the elections were in May. No, then, then the most important uh, was the uh, rapid development of many of many circles in. Uh, or Spain, the influence uh, of uh, Podemos in the social network uh, generally, no? then this was a combination no? of these different uh, activities and networks. No? In uh, the beginning of the campaign, uh, uh, they said uh, that uh, maybe Podemos could win a, a, a member of the new parliament, but not five, no. In this, it was after the the European election that was a new earthquake in Spain. No? And the sudden and sharp rise of uh, Podemos uh, expressed also the volatility of the electorate in Spain. They were fed up with what existed. They were desperate for something new, something radical, and something that could begin the transformation in the, in the country and break with austerity policies, break with the policies being imposed by the Troika all over Europe. And so in the first period, this was a very popular movement. Many, many people who were not political were coming to it. But then, Jaime, within this movement, those of us who live outside Spain but follow the politics, uh, felt that there was a slight contradiction developing between the over-reliance on the media and the base. Yes. Uh, and this has now led to a situation where we are sitting here talking and in today's El País we have a photograph, an uh, interesting photograph, of Inigo Arellón, one of the main strategists uh, with Pablo Iglesias of Podemos, uh, another Podemos uh, uh, from uh, Madrid, and in the center is a former general uh, who they have just recruited and will be on their list, I suppose, and this is their intervention to democratize NATO or get NATO to democratize the uh, European armies. I mean, this is like satire. Yes. I yes. mean, the only thing I will say which is interesting to me about this vote, Ryan, politically, it's a disaster. But the general does look more healthy than one of the Podemos. <laughs> uh, people, yeah. He's very well fit. He's obviously jogs, whereas the comrade here is looking slightly unhealthy, in my opinion. But apart from that, politically, it's a desperation to show we are respectable. You can trust us. We are not going to do anything too radical. Yes. But, Jaime, this has led to a decline in popularity, not an increase. Yes. Usually people do it because they think they will go up. In this case, they are going down. I mean, Podemos is now 10%. Uh, that depends. Uh, Where? Uh, oh, no, the surveys, no? Uh, they say uh, 10, uh, 15, no? more or less. No? no, the problem is that the, uh, the earthquake after the European elections, uh, the problem is that after that, the, there is a new feeling in the uh, leadership of Podemos that uh, Podemos can win the general elections. No? Then 
uh, they say uh, we must build an electoral war machine. No? Then uh, the, the, the new kind of party must be serving this aim. No? There was a new electoral uh, dynamic in this uh, leadership of Podemos. We can say that at the beginning, in the f uh, uh, until the end of the last year, the surveys uh, were in favor of this electoralist evolution, more or less. No? But uh, since the beginning of this uh, year, we, we see counter-offensive of the right, no? less presence of Podemos in the media, no? and uh, after contradictions in the discourse and in the program of uh, Podemos. No? Then, then that uh, opens a big crisis in the circles. No? In the circles no? Explain, because for an audience which is not so well informed about Spain, what are the circles? The circles are the, the organization of the activists of uh, Podemos in the cities, no? okay. in, the, in the different districts, no? or about the thematic uh, um, activities. No? For example, there is a circle about economy, ecology, uh, energy, a circle of a feminism circle, no? different uh, circles, no? but the majority of the circles are in the, in the districts, in, uh, in the neighbors uh, of, the, of the cities. No? And they meet collectively? They, they met collectively before the European elections. Okay. After that, in the assembly of Podemos at the end of the last year, the problem is the Podemos uh, decided a new a, a more conventional model of party with general secretary, with uh, citizens, council, councils. No? Then the circles uh, are substituted by, by this uh, more conventional model. So we are now at a situation where no commentator I have spoken to or newspaper I have read uh, is predicting uh, electoral triumph for Podemos. At best, it seems that they will be the fourth party. But even that is not unimportant in my opinion, provided this fourth party acts as a real intransigent opposition to the extreme center. Are they capable of doing this, Jaime? Because if you have a list of the party which is not elected by the assemblies, but decided by the general secretary and the, the circle around the general secretary, uh, and they are mainly full-time staff workers for Podemos, I mean, this will not seriously be representative of the Podemos base. So I fear that a Podemos as the fourth party, will they be able to change course and act as an opposition or will they carry on like this, showing how respectable we are? Before I, I forgot uh, the role uh, of Ciudadanos, no? because this is a new factor against Podemos. No? Uh, the, Ciudadanos. Since the beginning of this year, Ciudadanos appears of the the populism of the right. No? And fully backed by the media. Yes, fully, Massive full, very, very, full, very backed by the media. No? Then we propose a more moderate program because, you know, the people has also Ciudadanos. No? Then, then the, the perspective now, yes, it's that maybe Podemos could be the, the fourth parliamentary party after December. No? 
But uh, I think that after December, uh, there will be a new phase in Podemos, inside Podemos. Everybody talks uh, now also about a new extraordinary Congress. No? And there are some people, as Monedero, for example, who agree with us and other people. Uh, uh, he says uh, we must build a, a new kind of party to give a, a more protagonist role to the circles, no? uh, to the base of, the, of Podemos. No? A very big uh, challenge uh, for this, uh, the, the leadership of Podemos. No? But the problem is uh, uh, that uh, in January, uh, it depends on um, of the results of the election, but the problem is that we don't know how many activists will continue in Podemos. That's the problem. Because many activists are not now in the circles, no? and many uh, are in the uh, local candidatures. No? Uh, for example, in Madrid, ahora Madrid, no? or in Barcelona, no? then, uh, or in Galicia. Then we must see after December how Podemos is rebuilt as a Moen party and how he, uh, it uh, must uh, establish new alliances with uh, uh, Catalonia in, in Comú Podem in Catalonia, with the Mareas in Galicia, no? then we defend a confederal uh, party movement no? in the yeah. future. As a result of what the state has been up to and the virtual uh, collapse of any progressive project by the mainstream parties, especially PSOE, um, we have a very different situation in Catalonia than in Madrid. I mean, I was in Barcelona. Um, and the mood was very different, not just the mood of the left, the mood of the ordinary people who feel that they might have a future uh, that is better than a future within the Spanish state because they are very disappointed uh, with this state. Now, what is the attitude in Madrid, not of the bourgeoisie, we know that, but of progressive people uh, towards the possibility of Catalan independence and prior to that the demand of the Catalans for a referendum which Pessoi and uh, Pepe are both uh, attacking and saying it's not permissible. We had it in Britain. A conservative government allowed a referendum in Britain. Why not in Spain? What I mean is, uh, in Spain is that the, the majority of, of the established parties, no? the, the Popular Party and the Socialist Party, are uh, very nationalist. <laughs> the, uh, the Spanish nationalist is uh, very rooted in, in these uh, parties. No? But at the same time, we could uh, see a new uh, attitude uh, in, in between the people generally. No? Uh, because the, peop the, the people is uh, preoccupied uh, of the social about the social crisis, the disemployment, the unemployment, no? the social cuts, no? or in health, education. No? Then um, I think that in spite of the difficult um, understanding of what is coming now in uh, Catalonia, no? The people don't understand the rigidity of the government, no? the refusal of this uh, referendum. No? People now cannot uh, understand, the, for example, the decision of the new 
a Catalan Parliament to begin a, a unilateral independence. But um, I think uh, many people in Spain know that in every survey, uh, more than 70% uh, of Catalans are in favor of a referendum. No? Then in the last uh, surveys in Spain, we can see a more important percentage of people in favor of a political solution. Mm. No? And uh, it's true that the example of uh, uh, the Scottish referendum is uh, an alternative uh, seen as a democratic solution. No? Mm. But uh, I don't know, no? because the problem is that uh, the majority of the media Mm. Uh, oh, okay. are very, very belligerent, they say they coup d'etat, uh, it's crazy. Uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, I mean, the big disappointment, to put it mildly, in European politics this year has been the total capitulation of Syriza. Uh, and an abject capitulation, that first they ask the people do you want us, do you support us in opposing the Troika demands? 61% of Greeks sure. who vote say yes, resist the Troika. The very next day, Varoufakis, who is associated with the resistance to the Troika, is sacked. And uh, uh, Alexis Tsipras, capitulates without any shame, without any apology. This is the only way. That is bad enough. Then we have Pablo Iglesias, a popular leader of Podemos, rushing to Athens uh, to congratulate him. Now, yes. it's, I'm sure that this has an impact amongst young Spaniards who have seen what's happened in Greece. And of course, the conservatives use it from their own point of view. You want Syriza, you want to be like Syriza, vote Podemos. Yes. So it's, it's that particular tactical move, it's difficult to understand. I could understand because Iglesias uh, is becoming more political realistic, no? Uh, then uh, he says, uh, then you understand, uh, in that, he, he says some things uh, contradictory with the beginning of, the, this, of his discourse, um, because uh, after the European election, he says, the important is to win the elections, no? because we can, if we have the government, we can change. No? with this uh, uh, logic uh, Laclauean, uh, of Laclau discourse, yeah. no, the autonomy of politics. No? But after Greece, suddenly he recognized that uh, in spite of being in government, being in government we could, uh, he could not uh, do okay, yeah. anything. No? Then, uh, the problem is that um, he must understand that he needs not only to win the election, but to have a popular movement eh, with him to respond to, uh, to the um, counter-offensive of the Troika. No? What do you think, uh, realistically, we are going to see after the December election? After the December elections, in, in, gen generally, in, general. in general, no, I think that uh, the, the bipartism, I think, uh, uh, will finish. Won't, they won't have an they, overall they, majority. Yes, no. They won't have a, a, an absolute majority. majority. No? no. Then there will be uh, there will be uh, Ciudadanos and Podemos. No. The problem is uh, that if Podemos is the fourth uh, party, and Ciudadanos is. Uh, uh, near of the Socialist Party, no? uh, of, uh, um, then it will have the central role in this context. No? Then maybe it could uh, help uh, the, the, the People's Party or the Socialist Party to be in government. No? But at least uh, in the history of Spain, 
it will be a new uh, political phase. No? The, we, we will see political instability in Spain no? with a social, new social cuts eh, of this new government no? and uh, with the Catalan uh, challenge, yeah. of course. I mean, if you have uh, basically another extreme centre government without any changes, despite what the coalition is, Catalonia will go. I mean, every time this happens, more and more people in Catalonia favor independence. Yes, yes, yes. No, this will be will be the the first uh, challenge for this uh, new government. No, and then uh, in this context, I think that at least Podemos will could could have a position against this uh, new, I wrote uh, recently, new Troika, no? new Spanish <laughs> Troika, no? the three parties. No? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, we are knowing now the experience of the uh, People's uh, Party government in the Autonomous Community of Madrid. <laughs> no? mm -hmm. In see we are seeing that uh, Ciudadanos um, is supporting the People's Party government, but with many contradictions. The People's Party is now in a very big crisis in Madrid. No? In, after the elections, the leadership of uh, Rajoy uh, will be in very open crisis. No? In this context, Podemos could uh, be a, a strong, uh, intransigent opposition, opposition defending a project or a new constituent process against the, con the constitutional reform that the, 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 these three parties must uh, propose or must begin to discuss between them. No? In any case, uh, effectively, Jaime, the December election results will not be the usual results. There will be changes, the changes which we might not like, which could then lead to new discussions all over Spain because we've today discussed Spanish politics and to a limited extent uh, uh, Catalan politics. There's the whole question of the Basque country and the repression which continues, the prisoners that there are. Uh, it's a problem which uh, the Pepe and the PSOE failed to solve and refused to discuss uh, uh, with the Basque. So there is a lot of discussions to take place in an atmosphere of growing European instability. Yes. We have political economic instability in Europe and none of the political parties are offering solutions. And if, or oh, the mainstream parties. And if this carries on and the left becomes very weak, there is a real fear of extreme right politics getting yes. a grip, including in countries like France. I mean. Yes, yes, no, this is a very big problem, no, the, uh, because we need, after the experience of Greece, no, uh, the need of uh, building an alternative left uh, of, of the European scale, no, and the problem is that now the, this European crisis is uh, helping to develop the new far right, no, and then uh, this is a... Uh, a very big challenge, no? And the, um, I think that maybe Podemos, in spite of his contradictory evolution, could help, no? To with uh, other parties. I don't know, no? But Jeremy Corbyn, no? In in uh, England, no? Maybe could be a new hope, no? To to make new alliances, no? Be to, between different parties, no? proposing a plan B, no? a, an alternative plan against the austerity of the Troika, no? neoliberalism. Jaime, mean, on that note we end. We will carry on this discussion after December. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.